Hello Exile. This marks the last part of the Magic Find Tornado Shot journey. Let's dive straight into the build and examine each item in detail. Of course, we'll start with the bow, as it constitutes the largest part of our damage. Currently, I'm using a mirrored bow with 1200 physical DPS made by C. Kaiba. There is no fee on it, so you only need a mirror to make a copy. Before this, I used a bow with 650 physical DPS and two additional arrows. I believe this is the minimum damage threshold to successfully clear T16 maps. The critical strike chance on a bow is not too important for us, as when using Headhunter, we will often reach a 100% chance of crit from rare mobs. People often ask why a physical bow is used. On rare mobs, there are often mods like physical damage as extra elemental damage. Since we use Headhunter after killing several rare mobs, our damage increases significantly. While using an elemental bow, such a mod will give us much less damage, as it is based on physical damage. So, when using Headhunter, even if the physical bow has less damage on paper, it will actually be much stronger. Let's move on to the quiver. Currently, I am using a regular quiver with an additional arrow, flat physical damage, critical multiplier, life, and increased damage. I did not spend a lot of currency on it since I plan to make a mirror copy in the future. Next is the helmet. Here, I have a lot of life, rarity, and mana reservation, nothing special, just a good helmet. Since my auras are placed in the body armor, I use Greed's Embrace with plus one to the level of socketed gems to make my enlighten level five. Without this corrupt, there will not be enough mana for all auras. Next gloves. To get increased damage with hits against chilled enemies, you can take gloves with any of the incursion resistances and swap it in harvest. Here, we have 60% of physical damage converted to cold damage, suppression, attack speed, life, and rage generation. We use goldworm as boots. Ideally, we are interested in corruption with a chance to suppress spell damage. At the moment, I am missing one character level to achieve 100% suppression, so I use lucky suppression. The amulet is the same, with item quantity and rarity, plus critical multiplier, and anointed sovereignty for additional mana reservation. My Venter's Gamble, not perfect but pretty good, and Calandra's Touch. The belt is, of course a headhunter, what could be better? Now, the flasks. Of course, the ideal choice is Divination Distillate, without quality, so that it fills our life more slowly and, accordingly, works longer. Progenesis gives us good survivability and additional chaos resistance. Dying Sun gives us two additional projectiles. Gold Flask with increased effect and crafted rarity. And Quicksilver Flask with increased effect and evasion rating. Let's move on to the jewelry. I use Elegant Hubris with Kaspiro to get extra item rarity and not worry about attributes. Massive Thread of Hope gives us the opportunity to save a lot of points and take many useful nodes. Unnatural Instinct in this place gives us a large number of useful nodes, such as Accuracy, Life, Critical Strike Chance, and some resistances. The first cluster, Feed the Fury and Fuel the Fight, gives us life and mana leech, while Martial Prowess provides damage and additional accuracy. Here we have a medium cluster with Spike Concoction, which gives a 10% increased flask effect and additional flask charges gained. This, combined with the nodes in the tree, gives us almost constant flasks while we kill mobs. The second medium cluster with Repeater and Streamline provides the best nodes for us, offering a large amount of damage. I also corrupted it to get the Corrupted Blood Implicit. As otherwise, this implicit can be taken by unnatural instinct. My watcher's eye has three useful nodes, attack damage by precision, cold penetration by hatred, and physical damage taken as by purity of elements. I did not take chaos resistance by purity because under the influence of progenesis, I have 43% chaos resistances and cap chaos resistances against damage over time. The new jewel, that which was taken, was a lucky purchase with all the useful nodes. Recovering life and mana on kill with instant leech allows us to pass maps with less recovery where we cannot leech. Physical damage as an extra random element gives a little extra damage, and the 2% leech if you've killed recently also looks good. Let's move on to the charms. On this one, I have culling and cannot take reflected elemental damage, which allows me to pass elemental reflect maps. Consequently, I can tackle any 8 mod map. On the next one, I have suppression and critical strike chance, which is actually not needed and can be changed to something more useful. 
The last one has adrenaline on low life and leech, which can also be replaced. Since we use petrified blood, we will almost always be in the region of 50% life, so adrenaline will almost always work. The second large cluster with 12 passives and increased effect gives a large amount of damage as well as chaos resistances. For the fifth ascendancy, I use occupying force. I decided to run a couple of maps with this node, and I liked it much more than focal point. Since we are constantly on the move, our mirage archers deal a huge amount of damage due to headhunter stacks and help us clear maps. Meanwhile, the sniper's mark, due to cooldown, will not be applied to every rare mob. Plus, not to mention the price difference. But what to choose is up to you. To make it easier for me to collect loot after clearing the map, in the second weapon slot, I use the following items, the Screaming Eagle, which gives 10% movement speed, and Parapetia, which gives 20% movement speed. I also use the Movement Ability Shield Charge with faster attacks and life tap. Now, a little about gems. In the helmet, I use Arrogance with precision. I also added Vitality here to slightly increase comfort. You can also take a charm with banner has no reservation and replace vitality with dread banner. Additionally, there's also berserk here. In boots, we have sniper's mark with mark on hit and life tap, plus blood rage. All auras with enlighten are placed in the body armor, and I also have flame dash here. Gems in gloves allow you to generate power charges and give onslaught. I also have steel skin here, and main link with tornado shot. So, we have 90% item quantity and almost 500% item rarity, Good damage that allows you to comfortably pass 8 mod maps with league mechanics, and normal survivability for an MF build. I managed to reach level 98 just by farming. Now let's talk a little about the Atlas. At the moment, I'm using the strategy with Beyond and Legion, and I think that this is the best approach. I also tried Abyss, but I didn't like it because I often one-shot the Spire, and they don't have time to spawn a lot of mobs. My Atlas looks like this. But the basic minimum looks like this. As you can see, only 111 points out of 132 are used here. You can spend the rest at your discretion. I like the Delirium and Ritual nodes, you can also use the map nodes if you don't have enough of them, or any other mechanics that spawn a lot of mobs. I use the following sextants, Additional Legion, Beyond, Strongbox Corrupted, and 500% increased item quantity from Strongbox mobs. And Scarabs, Gilded Reliquary, Divination, Ambush, plus Polished Legion. Also, due to the fact that too much currency is dropping, I want to try using Winged Scarab. I always use the Ambush option from the map device. I make all the maps myself, and so far, I haven't had to buy them even once. First, I enhance them to 20% quality and then corrupt them, since I can go through all the map mods, I accumulate a large number of them. In the favored map slot, I have all burial chambers. Now, I have only run a little over 240 maps, and so far, I have received 5 the doctor maps. Not as many as I wanted, but still not bad. Still, I haven't received a single valuable T0 unique, although all my friends already have at least one valuable belt or mirror. But despite the lack of such big drops, there is so much loot in this league that I have enough without them. Have you already received Headhunter, Mage Blood, or Mirror? I'm thinking of trying Hardcore or SSF Magic Find. What do you think about it? Also, write what you would like to see. See you next year, exile, and have a nice holiday.